The natural disposition of the believer is actually to be silent unless necessary. The Prophet ﷺ praised the person who goes into a gathering and leaves it almost unnoticed. Umar anhu mentioned that a person who talks too much is likely to make too many mistakes. And if you make too many mistakes, then you're more likely to enter the fire. So the believer is very measured about what they hear and what they say. And as they are measuring every single word and considering whether that word will be for them or against them and observing prophetic silence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them with the silence of paradise. But it's not like the silence of this world. When you think of many of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they had every reason to be arrogant, but instead they were very humble. Like Uthman anhu, who was known for his modesty, yet he was the richest of the companions. Or Khadija anha, despite her prominence, despite her prestige, despite her beauty, Khadija anha was known to be a woman who was extremely humble, extremely modest. Now, we already spoke about the special home for Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. But remember, one of the things that was said to Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha in the glad tidings that were delivered to her is that there is a home in paradise for you where there will be no noise and no fatigue. And subhanAllah, the word that is used is nasab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يمسهم فيها نصب, That in paradise, they're not going to be struck with any type of exhaustion, any type of annoyance, why? Because they bore all of that in this life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of how many times Khadija radiallahu anha heard an insult. Think of how many times she comforted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa while the noise was taking place outside of her home. Think of how many times Khadija radiallahu anha applied the qualities of Ibadul Rahman, the servants of the most merciful. And then think of ourselves. There are times where you hold your tongue and you want to say something so bad. There are times that you remove yourself from a gathering where you don't participate in certain gossip or certain backbiting. And it gets to a point where it becomes disgusting to you, where your fitra kicks in, your natural disposition kicks in, and you start to feel an aversion towards those things. And so you want quiet. Also, there are people that talk about getting away from everything because that's the only time they can relieve themselves from stress. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, لا تسمع فيها لاغية. You will not hear in paradise any type of idle noise. And who is this for? الذين هم عن اللغوي معرضون. Those who protected themselves from it in this life, Allah gives them an eternity without it in the next. Now there's something very beautiful about this. You know, when you want to go take a walk in Jannah and you want to go meditate, if you will, or sit at one of the cliffs of Jannah and just look at the rivers, look at the water, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يسمعون فيها لغوا إلا سلاما. They will not hear anything in it of idle talk except for salam, salam. So they're constantly hearing salam, salam, salam. And you never get sick of salam in Jannah. Afshu salam. You've spread peace. Tadkhulu al-Jannah bi salam. And you enter into Jannah in peace. This is Daru salam. This is the abode of peace. Allahumma anta salam. Allah is the source of peace. تَحِيَّتُهُمْ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ سَلَامٌ The day you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's salam. You hear salam from Allah and the angels are coming to you from every direction. Salam, 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 salam. And you don't get sick of it. And subhanAllah, as you are sitting in paradise and enjoying the quiet, one of the things that the scholars say is that those who brought quiet and peace in this world, they now get to enjoy the quiet in the hereafter. They're not annoyed anymore. Just like the person that's enjoying himself in paradise because of the tree that he removed from the path because it was a source of inconvenience to the people. Now he gets to enjoy the gardens of paradise, the trees of paradise. So you're sitting there and you're relaxing. And you know, sometimes when someone is quiet in this life or someone is you know, looking at nature, staring into nature or taking a walk, there's something that's bothering them. And that might be why they're quiet. So they might be quiet on the outside and it might be noisy on the inside. Maybe they're overcome by some sort of grief. Maybe they're trying to sleep, but they can't sleep. They can't rest because their thoughts are so noisy. 
Their troubles are so noisy. They're hearing so much, they're feeling so much, and there's pain inside that's taking away their enjoyment. You know, SubhanAllah, if someone is grieving, you could put them on the most beautiful beach in the world, but that grief is so noisy and troubling. And the outer beauty and the outer quiet is not going to quiet the inside. But here's what happens to you in Jannah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa says, أَلَّا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ That they will not fear, nor will they grieve. So while you're sitting in Jannah and enjoying the quiet and breathing in the fresh air and no longer bothered and not exhausted or fatigued, you say, Alhamdulillahi ladhi adhab anna al-hazan. All praises be to Allah who removed sadness from us. There are no more worries that stop you from peace. There is no trauma in Jannah. So you're not thinking about anything that's going to disturb your thoughts. It's quiet out of joy and relaxation. And as we said, there are no hard feelings anymore in your chest. So all the hard feelings are gone. All the emotional turmoil is gone. All the thoughts and anxiety are gone. It's just sitting in quiet and in peace. And people, subhanAllah, in this life, they try to go to quiet so that they can remove stress. You don't have stress anymore in Jannah. One dip in Jannah and stress no longer exists. But what do you want to listen to in Jannah? And this is where it gets really beautiful and very interesting. Sa'id ibn Sa'id al-Harithi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that there are forests of golden bamboo in Jannah that are loaded with pearls. And when the people of paradise desire to hear a beautiful sound, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a wind and it will bring about all the sound that they desire. So think about the wind chimes of Jannah and the birds chirping while you're sitting there. And one of the things that we avoid in this life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sinful music. And in one narration from Muhammad ibn al-Mukandir, he said that on the day of judgment, a caller will call, where are those who protected their ears and themselves from the meetings of amusement and the instruments of shaitan? Put them on the dunes of musk, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the angels, Asmi'uhum tamjidi wa tahmidi. Cause them to hear my glorification and my praise. So the angels start to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the angels do dhikr, you know, think of beautiful munshideen or qurra, people that recite the Quran or recite beautiful poems and beautiful nasheeds. Imagine listening to the angels glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. And Shahr ibn Hawshab rahimahullah, he said that Allah will say to the angels, my devoted slaves loved beautiful voices in this world, but they abandoned some of them for my sake, meaning the sinful ones. Make them hear what is even more beautiful. So the angels will start to glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that they've never heard before. There's no album like the album of the Malaika singing, and you can hear that in Jannah, and that can be your soundtrack while you're walking in Jannah and strolling and enjoying the quiet. But it doesn't stop there. And Imam al-Uza'i rahimahullah, he said that there is no one who has a more beautiful voice among the creation of Allah than Israfil alayhi salam. I told you we'd get back to him. Remember Israfil who has his lips puckered to the horn to end the world? Now he no longer does that. And he has the most beautiful voice and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command him to sing. And there will remain no angel in the skies except that it will suspend its prayer to listen to Israfil alayhi salam. And that will continue as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, if the people knew my greatness, they would not worship anyone beside me, subhanAllah. But it doesn't stop there. What about the prophets of Allah? Remember Dawood alayhi salam and what he has of beauty? Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah explains the ayah, وَإِنَّ لَهُ عِنْدَنَا لَزُلْفَى وَحُسْنَ مَآبِ That verily for him, Dawood alayhi salam, is closeness to us and a good place to return to. He said that when the day of judgment comes, a high pulpit will be put in Jannah and Allah will say, Ya Dawood, glorify me with that beautiful and melodious voice which used to glorify me with in the world. And Dawood alayhi salam will start to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will capture the attention of all of the people of Jannah and give them joy. So dhikr beautifies your quiet in dunya while increasing your reward in Jannah. But what does dhikr do for you in Jannah? And if this is the beauty of all of the voices and the sounds, the birds chirping, the angels glorifying Allah, the wind chimes, the recitation of the prophets, 
What are you going to sound like in Jannah when you glorify Allah? Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati